Thank you, Santiago, for looking very Christmassy today. And uh, all of you for looking like such beautiful people. Isn't it nice to come to a place where it is expected that the pastor will say how beautiful you look? I mean, you did take a shower, you did do your hair, you did brush your teeth. Oh, sorry, I shouldn't say all these things. But you are looking marvelous today, and thank you so much for coming and making up this congregation. Because after all, that's what we're doing today. We are congregating together because we love a certain man who came, who lived, who died, and has risen again. And we praise him today. His name is Jesus. I'm going to sing a few songs with you. I've asked my friend Melody if she would just help me out here. They're songs of joy. Uh, uh, the, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Have you ever heard that one? Yes. Is that the right one? Do you know this one? It's a little high, but here we go. The joy of the Lord is my strength, my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength, my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength, my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. How about this one? I've got the joy, joy, joy down in my heart. You, got, you want to sing that one with me? Are you sure you mean it? Okay. Or are you waiting for lunch? I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart, down in my heart, down in my heart. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart, down in my heart to stay. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I have the love of Jesus in my heart. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I have the love of Jesus in my heart. Aren't you glad she plays that so well? I mean, it just makes you think of wonderful, happy, happy things. How about Joy Like a Fountain? Okay, but this is a long song that goes with this one, but we're just going to sing Joy Like a Fountain. Do we know that? Peace like a river, joy like a fountain in my soul. I'm a Got joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. Come on, we've got to be kids. Joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. So you've been singing, thank you. Thank you so much. Just, yeah, you can continue all you want. Here we have sung songs about the fact that there is joy in our hearts, in the depths of our souls. I want you to know that this is the prayer that I have for this entire congregation today, that you will indeed feel that joy at this Christmas time, at this time that, that we call Advent. I hope that it, that it goes deep into you, not only to just be tinsel and lights, but that it would actually sink deep in and make you the kind of person that you believe God would have you to be this Christmas time. Because you see, it was Mary. Some refer to her as Mother Mary. The moment that the angel came and said to her that she would be the one, she had no knowledge of the fact that she was going to be a mother and less knowledge of the fact that she was going to be a mother in that fashion. That the joy to the world would come through her. You're going to be the chosen one to have God in you. The Apostle Paul, if you want to be a big, deep theologian, talks about a lot, a lot of being in Christ and having Christ in us. 
But never is it more poignant than at this time of year when we think about the angel coming, the angel saying to Mary, you are favored by God because God has chosen you to be the one to have this mysterious experience where he will come and he will make you pregnant. Pregnant with his son. It's not going to be Joseph's. He is going to be the son of the Most High God. It's the stuff of myth and legend. But it's the stuff that we believe in as recorded in Scripture. This moment, Mary says to the angel, How can this be? The angel tells her, She still doesn't understand, just as we still don't understand. But she says those famous words that have been immortalized in literature and also in song. Let it be. Let it be. Even as you have said that it would be. Let it be. Joy unspeakable joy not understandable next in, in our context and definitely extraterrestrial we have movies we have music that tries to approximate what this experience was like but i i, I don't know it, it, it may be because it, it's just so mysterious we still watch those movies because we just don't know how that could happen, even with the CGI that we watch and we see things twist and change in various contexts. We cannot comprehend that this Creator God would decide to insinuate Himself into the body of a young lady who had never had a child to mix with her DNA and for a child to be born in a stable in the proper place at the proper time. The wow factor, I don't know for you, but for me, the wow factor of this whole thing never ceases to get a hold of my heart, never ceases to get a hold of my attention, because we just don't know. It is mysterious. But today, you see, we're talking about joy. It's the third word, the third candle of Advent. I don't know about you, but I have been, I've been experiencing that joy because it is a gift from God, just as Jesus is a gift to humanity and his life is a gift to humanity. So he is what I would call the joy to the world. The result is, because of his coming, that he can be in all of us. Just as we were just singing a moment ago, I've got the joy, 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 where? Down in my heart. Down in my heart. That's actually a, a statement that you're making when you sing that song. It says, first of all, that you know that there is a God. Second of all, that you know that he gives the gift of joy. And third of all, that you have accepted that gift. And fourth and most interestingly, that it has now become part of you. In that mysterious way in which God comes and invades us with his joy is the same kind of thing that happened to Mary that day when the angel came and said, you are going to be pregnant with most high God. He comes to all of us. He comes to all of us in that same way. And he offers us, he offers us the opportunity to have God live in us. Mysterious, yes. Uh, interesting, uh, always. Absolutely amazing. 
I believe that Jesus is the joy to the world. Isn't that what the, that the angels said to the, to the shepherds when they burst through the dimension? Isn't that what you believe it was? Isn't that what we would say it was? They were, they were right behind that portal, and suddenly when the signal was given, boom, they burst through the portal and they say, joy to the world. The Lord is come. Jesus, you see, is this embodiment. He is this embodiment of the joy of the Lord. So we can sing, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Why? Because it's Jesus. Jesus is my strength. He is the one who gives us this joy. Now we were, we were together, some of us, last night, and, and I, I, I told you that I would say this. Joy is not happiness. Okay, f- uh, finish this phrase for me. Y'all, y'all are Americans, right? America. Amen. Life, liberty, and the... You're Americans, after all. Well done. (laughs) Don't think the Canadians know that one. The pursuit of happiness, my friend, does it guarantee the catching of happiness? No, it doesn't. It just says we would like to have a place in the world known as America where you can pursue happiness. Now, does that mean that you're in a nice car and you're pursuing another nice car? You know, you're enjoying your happiness and you're, you're in pursuit. No, it's, it's like happiness is this elusive thing that we are at liberty to pursue. Why is it so different from joy? Well, joy, my friends, is a gift. It's not something that just comes up from within us naturally. It is something that God gives to us as a way, I'm going to say, as a way of living in this world, even when there are things happening, even when there are, uh, uh, there's death and destruction and, and, and melee around us we can still have joy deep, deep down in our hearts. The only way that I can explain that, my friends, is that it is outside of us and it is put into us. Just like Mother Mary. We, I believe, become incarnations. Hold with me here. I'll I'll, I'll make a little caveat in a moment. We become incarnations of the living God. No, we don't become God. Please understand, that is not what I'm saying today. We do not become God, but He comes and He dwells within us. And you're thinking, how? What? Well, when you feel that joy that comes right down into your heart, into into your spirit, that is God saying to you, I am living in you, I am... Uh, you, you have accepted, you have said, just like Mary said, let it be. Maybe an even smaller word, amen. Because that's what amen means. Let it be. Let it be as you, God, determine that it should be. Please come into my heart. Please dwell in me. We say, let it be, let Let him be in us. Let him be directing us. We become incarnations of the living God. Vessels that hold the power source of the universe. The joy, I would say, the joy, the joy of the universe. Got the joy, joy, joy down deep in my soul. I believe that's a song of possession. Some get very, very upset when I talk about possession. But I want you to know that uh, without even knowing it, you just sang three songs that ask God to possess you. (laughs) Was that sneaky? I don't know. 
I don't know, you, you, you tell me. Uh, but you are saying, I am possessed, I am possessed by joy. I've invited joy into my heart, into my soul. Mary was told she was going to have a baby and that it was going to be fathered by God himself. And she said, okay. She said, let it be. God comes to each and every one of us, and especially at this time, we can tell the world he comes to each one of us and says, I would love to put my joy in you because it will, it will grow and it will give birth to a life that, that will be unexplainable to your neighbors, unexplainable to your workmates, that you will have this, this joy that cannot be explained by your circumstances. You see, because circumstance and happenstance are two very similar words. And from happenstance, we get the word happy. And so when the, when the world looks at you and says, how can you be happy? You can say, I'm not just happy, I'm filled with joy. Amen. And then they'll say, well, wh can I get some of that? And you can say, Yes. He is willing, ready, able to give joy to anyone who asks. Anyone who wants to have Jesus come into their heart, he will do that. You see, joy is a gift. It's a gift from God. It has nothing to do with our own creative process, mental or physical. It's completely and wholly outside of ourselves. This is the nature of joy. This is the nature of salvation. This is the nature of Jesus Christ. This is the nature of the incarnation. So I'll, I'll tell you what I was told many years ago. We get, when we do this thing, when we do this, this thing of asking God to come in and give us his joy and, and, and possess us, we do this thing where we are saying, we are willing to continue the incarnation of Jesus. Let that percolate for a moment. We ask him in, and as a result, he uses our lives by our permission, by our choice, he uses our lives to continue his work, which is incarnated into humanity. In your neighborhood, through your network, he is able to do his saving work. Is that not just amazing to you? that he would deign to use me. That's why the Bible calls us jars of clay. Just earthenware. But what it contains, what, what it has inside is the mystery, is the most amazing thing. Joy unspeakable. Joy amazing. Joy that comes from outside of us and dwells within us. The Advent season, this, this Advent season, when our focus is, is not only on the past, the first Advent, but as Adventists, okay, we, we should be very excited about the fact that this, because of this season where we are looking backwards, we also have the opportunity to talk to people about looking forward. And about saying, you know what, even before the great appearing, even before the big change takes place, we can be a part of a kingdom of joy, a kingdom that Jesus himself is already in charge of here and now. So when you say happy, happy Advent to someone, as I have been trying to school myself this Christmas season, I'm not trying to take the Christ out of Christmas. I'm emphasizing the fact that he came once and he's going to come again. Amen. And that we have an opportunity regardless of the fact that it's the 25th of December, probably not when he was born. Regardless of that, we have this opportunity where people, uh, the nuns, <laughs> bless their hearts, N-O-N-E-S, 
I told the Sabbath school class this morning that 35% of millennials, okay, let's just show the old people, shall we? How many of you consider yourself a millennial? Raise your hand. Nope, sorry, you are not a millennial, my darling. Uh, you, you, you are probably a builder generation. This is a generational name. So probably born in the 80s. No, no. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm, not a millennial, I'm not a millennial either. I, I, I quite, don't quite know what I am. But the 35% of millennials today say that they are none. When they get to ask, when you ask them, what religion do you define yourself by? They check none. Largest voting bloc in the United States today, bigger than the evangelical voting bloc, is the bloc of people who say, we do not identify with any religion. So this stuff that we've been talking about today, A, they may never have heard it. B, if they've heard a little bit of it, they're confused by it. C, uh, 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 they just know that Christmas means presents. So here we are, here we sit, doing a religious thing that Christians do. We come to church, we congregate ourselves together, and, and, a, and a pastor gets up and, and talks to you from the Word of God and tells you stories about things that come from the Word of God, like Mary being impregnated by eternal God. Imagine yourself never having heard this kind of thing and, 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 and sitting here listening to me today. 35% of our kids do not identify themselves as any religion. And what is happening is that they are deciding to be eclectic. Don't you love lovely words like that? I like cool words that sound like electric but are not. It's eclectic, not eclair. I know that's tasty. But it's eclectic. They gather to themselves various bits and pieces and they call that their spirituality. I just wanted you to be aware of that this Christmas. Because who knows who may come. That song that Eric chose where it said that we might have relatives coming. You know, some of you have relatives coming. Some of you are going to see relatives. Some of you are worried because you don't know how to talk to those relatives. You don't know how to tell them, I, I love Jesus. Jesus has given me a joy in me that, that I have a hard time expressing sometimes and I really don't know how to tell you about it. This is a problem. But I've got a solution for you. In this Christmas time, if you have one of those situations, I'm going to ask you to pray to the God who came to Mary, who sent his angel to Mary, and pray that he will honor his promise. Do you know what his promise is? His promise is when you get in those situations where you're looking at somebody whom you love, somebody whom you would love to spend eternity with, who does not understand the universe from your perspective, who does not believe that this is the inspired word of God, nor that God is in a human being called Jesus. How do you talk to them? I want you to do something that God asks you to do, and that is ask the Holy Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit to give you the words to speak to them so that they will understand. Pray that whatever words that you give at that moment are going to be the words that He would want them to hear. He's done it before, you know. He did it at Pentecost. Peter was speaking words. And they might as well have been blah, 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 blah to so many people from so many different parts of the world. But the Bible tells us that between Peter's lips and their ears, they heard in their own language. As we go from this place today, having experienced uh, a situation in which we have sung praises to the God of the universe, as we have thanked Him for the joy that He puts in our lives every day, even though we are experiencing difficulties. How do we go and translate that to a world where 35% of the kids that we may come across 
do not know, maybe don't want to know. How do we talk to them? My friends, it's going to start with a a commitment. And I'm going to give you that opportunity this morning. I'm going to give you that opportunity to, to sing together as we close another commitment song. Fair warning. Okay? If you didn't want to leave here possessed by the Holy Spirit, you may not want to sing this song. And I, I say that in all seriousness. Because God does not force us. I told Jack and his brother Dean this morning that God is not going to force anybody to go to heaven. He'd like us to. He wants us to. He's made every provision for us to get there through the blood of the Lamb. But he's not going to force us. So if you sing with me, you're doing it of your own free will, not because you want to impress anybody, even God. But the song goes like this. Into my heart, into my heart, come into my heart, Lord Jesus, come in today, come in to stay. He will make you into the joy to the world. Amen.